Next, we're going to find our HVDC negative cable, which is marked HVDC negative. On the other side, it will say Bay 3 negative. And in the middle, it'll say 48S quantity 2, 18S minus. Now, we're going to take the HVDC negative cable and we're going to make sure the conduit on the Bay 1 positive is not in this hole, so slide it all the way over the eyelet here, like as shown. And then we're going to route our HVDC negative cable underneath this cable and through the hole. Make sure when the eyelet comes out on this side over here that we're still underneath. So once you come through with the HVDC negative, we're going to route underneath everything. So we're going to go underneath the bypass connector cable and we're going to go underneath this resistor. We're going to turn right and go underneath this bus bar. We're going to go underneath the LIBCM positive. We're going to go underneath this orange cable and we're going to go underneath the LIBCM negative. The goal is to get to that screw right there. And keep in mind again that nothing on this is high voltage right now. We only have the 12S module connected. It does not meet the definition of high voltage. So you can touch anything with your hands here. There's no danger of getting electrocuted. So once we get roughly in position here, we're gonna make sure that the conduit is slid as far, uh, as close to this eyelid as we can get. And that will open up the very end of this cable here, which has a pretty hard bend. And we'll go ahead and push that cable down into place there. It might not go that easily. I've done this a few times. And then we're gonna reinstall this number two Phillips screw here. So next we're gonna take the 18S minus module that has the BMS adapter that doesn't have the nylon shielding on it. And we're gonna take and find the Bay 3 positive cable, which is here. This is the Bay 3 positive cable. It says Bay 3, and then it'll says 48S quantity to 18S minus, and it has a red Anderson connector on it. We're gonna attach this to the positive side which we've marked here previously. We're not going to install the wire onto the negative side. We'll do that in a second. So once again, we want the high current cables to be down. So in this case, down below the BMS connector. And once again, we're gonna slide in here. And again, we need to make sure that our cables don't do silly things like that. And once you get it in there, we're gonna go and grab these two connectors. And as before, I'm not pulling on the cables, I'm pushing on the battery to get it to slide in. And we're gonna over slide module three here, and we're gonna go ahead and connect this negative terminal. At this point, this is still technically not high voltage because we haven't connected the other side up. And then we'll go ahead and just slide that back slightly. Okay, next we're gonna take module two, which is the 18S minus module that does have this nylon fabric over it. And module two, we will install the last cable, which is bay two minus. So this is an 18S minus, the negative is over here. You can double check that because we wrote a negative right there. And we're going to attach this cable down like that. Once again, we're going to turn to where the high current side of the cable is below the BMS connector. And then we're going to slide it, as always, through this hole. Now this last module is going to be harder to put in if you leave this rubber gasket installed. It is doable. Having it installed does reduce the uh, rattling in the car. One thing I like to do as well, and it's probably not completely necessary, but I like to take this uh, loose connection here and just take a random bolt, it doesn't matter which one, and just screw it into the threads in the top here. And that way there's no chance it can accidentally touch something and short out. We're going to once again grab all three of our cables, so the BMS connector, the temp sensor, and then the current cable. And we're gonna just slide this module in. Now again, this can get pretty tight with these rubber gaskets. Once the three wires are uh, totally clear here, we can come over to the back side here and push this module in. 
And then when this face is flush with that face, that's fully installed. Okay, next we're gonna take and route the red Anderson cable underneath the Bay 3 minus cable, like so. It's very important that you do that. If you don't, you're gonna run into problems later on. So at the end of the day, the cables should look like that, where the Bay 2 cable is underneath the Bay 3 cable. So now we need to slide this cable through the hole we drilled here, but that hole has a 90 degree bend in it and this connector won't fit through it. So what we need to do is we need to remove this connector. And to do that, we're going to take a flathead screwdriver and we're going to push on the metal tab that's underneath the actual connector. So there is our actual connector. There's a metal tab underneath it. And once you push down, it will let you pull over. You can see how this metal tab holds on to the back of this connector, onto this lip right here. So with that connector off, without touching this connector to the battery enclosures, we're gonna slide through this hole, and then we're gonna slide through the hole that's immediately next to it right here as well. And we're going to route the cable and the jacket all the way through there like that. And then we're going to reattach this uh, cover. And so to put the connector cover back on, uh, the side with the lip on the bottom, which is my pointer finger, is going on the same side as the metal here. If you put this on backwards, it's not even gonna try to fit in there. So you can't put it on wrong. Make sure this is snapped all the way in. You should be able to pull on the Anderson connector and it won't come back off. Now we're gonna rotate back here and we're gonna attach this final cable. To do that, we need to push the module two back out about an inch. And then we're gonna remove this bolt here and we're going to attach here and screw this on with a nut. Now we're gonna take our three aluminum brackets and we're going to install them. The side here with the hard edge on it is going to always be closest to the battery terminal there. And <clears throat> what we need to do is take the washers that come with like that and then take these nuts and thread them on, but don't tighten them all the way. We'll do the same thing with this next one here. And finally, on the 12S module, we're going to put this on. If you need to bend this connector a little bit, that's fine. Don't bend it excessively, you don't want it to fatigue. And then notice how I have this cable is on top of this standoff and this one goes on the bottom of it. And we're gonna take, and on the 12S, we're gonna use the two bolts and again, two washers here. Now we're gonna take any random bolts, doesn't matter which ones, and we're going to screw them in to all of these holes before we tighten those bolts. If you don't do this, you're gonna have a headache in a second. Notice I'm not tightening these bolts all the way. All I'm trying to do is make sure that once we tighten these bolts, the holes will line up here when we go to install the fan shroud. So now we'll go ahead and tighten these bolts and nuts. And then we do need to make sure that all of the metal pieces here are gonna be flush with each other. In this case, it's not. So I need to go ahead and loosen these four bolts and nuts. And I need to reposition this. So I'm gonna just try and reposition this. There we go, like that. So go ahead and tighten all of these up. Now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and take all of these screws out again. Okay, now we're gonna take our fan shroud and we're gonna slide the red Anderson connector through the hole that we drilled. Like that. And we're gonna take and attach our fan shroud.
And now we'll take and route the red Anderson connector through the 7 8 inch hole we drilled here. And we're gonna connect this red Anderson connector, like so. And we're gonna reinstall our side plate. Okay, and we're gonna take the fan harness and snap the three connectors back in. And then the fourth connector head itself, like that. Before we install the LIBC and PCB, we need to tidy up the bay here a little bit. So we're gonna take some zip ties and we're going to first make sure that the bay three minus cable is on top of the bay two minus cable. And once you've verified that, we're gonna take a zip tie like so. And we'll take another zip tie and do the same thing over on the other side. And now we'll make sure in bay one that the 12S BMS adapter here is just up and there's nothing blocking it. And then the temperature sensor is right below it. And then the temperature sensor in bay two should be above the high current cables and below the BMS connector. And then the temperature sensor in bay three should again just be free like this. And now we need to um, rotate the 18S connectors the right way. So bay three, if you look at the 18S connectors, there's this look and then there's that look. So there, there is a difference, but you can see it here. As I'm showing it here is how you should install it in the dual 18S minus. So for example, you don't want to install it that direction. That would be incorrect. So what I like to do is just take a Sharpie and just put a mark on it or whatever. So you know, hey, that's the right direction there. And then this is the right direction here. So now we need to secure these in space so that they don't rattle around while you're driving because that will actually break these connectors. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a zip tie and we're going to just secure it loosely around the BMS cable. And then we're going to stick another zip tie into it and we're going to again secure it loosely like that. So now we're going to take the one that's wrapped around the BMS connector and we're going to go over this orange insulating jacket and we're going to tighten this guy all the way and make sure that it's on one of the sides like this, you know, the bottom side, for example. With that tightened, we'll go ahead and cut the tail off and we're going to take the remaining zip tie and we're going to put it around this stud like that, grab the tail and we're going to just tighten this in place. You want this zip tie to be as low on that stud as you can get it. That will hold this in place so it doesn't rattle around when you drive and we'll cut the tail off. We're going to do the same thing over here, but first we're going to take and just kind of tuck this out of the way. So we're going to, once again, take a zip tie, wrap it around the BMS sense leads, like so. We're gonna take another one and wrap it around, like so. And then we'll go ahead and tighten the zip tie that's around the BMS connector. And we'll cut the tail off. And then we'll once again take the tail here, move this to where it's on the back side of that connector, and we'll go ahead and tighten it. Again, as close to the bottom of the stud as you can get, like so. And we'll cut the tail off like that. And now we'll pull this connector back out. And now we're ready to install the LIBC and PCB. To do that, we need to actually use these ribbon cable connectors. And the trick to installing these easily is that the further spread apart they are like that, the harder it is to install the ribbon cable. So if you do it kind of like that, you know, to where the ribbon cable can still slide through, that'll make it really easy to attach. And the order I'm attaching these is important from a safety perspective. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect all three of the temperature sensors. 
So that is this sensor up here. This sensor goes here. And this last sensor, which is a bit shorter, goes there. And I can touch anywhere along this C06 connector and I can touch this bolt and that's totally safe. The fan is safe. Everything here is safe to touch. And so that's where I recommend you hold this while you do the rest of the installation here. So first we're gonna plug the 12S connector in. Notice that the connector is to the right of the temperature sensor. So I'm gonna plug this in and push on it. The 12S connector is hard for the uh, latches to, to secure. So you do have to push on it kind of hard. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and connect the um, 18S module here. Again, I make sure that the 18S BMS leads are to the right of this temperature sensor. And then again, we wanna make sure the uh, clips here are loose enough that this connector can slide in. Okay. And so at this point, this PCB is still technically not high voltage according to automotive standards. When we plug the last connector in here, it will be high voltage. So at that point, you do need to be very careful. To do that, I'm gonna take and just plug this ribbon cable in like that. And now I'm gonna just make sure everything kind of stays tidy as I secure this.